MJ DeMarco wrote a book called Unscripted. It was a, it's a good book, kind of a self-help, get going in business, make yourself successful kind of book. And in this book, he discussed the gumball machine analogy. And it was a good one. There were four kinds of gum, gumballs that could be in the machines, and uh, you could draw them, and it would kind of be, that's what your life is made up of. And, and so I thought about this some more, and I thought, you know, there are more than four. And, and he was just you know, rounding down to keep it simple. And I thought, well, why don't I make it less simple and uh, talk about this analogy for a little bit. And I, I'm going to change it and, and call it, you know, a raffle uh, tumbler or, or drum or a lottery tumbler. You know, those, those round things, the barrel that you spin and, and then you reach in and you pull one out and you don't know what it's going to be. That's what this is going to be about. And I'll call little slips of paper or tickets, I'll call them, uh, the pieces of paper that go into the uh, drum. And just work through this analogy, and please give me a little leniency here. This isn't perfect. This isn't going to, you know, there are parts that this breaks down. This is just a general concept that I think could be well worth your time listening to and uh, kind of thinking about how it applies in your life, and more importantly, what you can do to make your life better in whatever way you want it to be as you move forward. So I, I, I'm planning for this to be well worth your time. We're going to start with a human being before they're even born. Let's, let's just say at, at conception. So a gal and a dude hook up and the, the kiddo is conceived. And this is a particular day. And on that day, we're going to imagine that the universe has a whole big bucket full of random tickets or little slips of paper with things written on them. And they are going to uh, randomly deposit those slips in each little kiddo that's being conceived that day. They're going to deposit those slips. And th th they vary. You know, some of them, I made a little list here. One of them might be that the kid's going to be average height, or he's going to be the top 1% of horrible metabolism, which is kind of naturally always going to be heavy. Or maybe uh, mom's going to drink heavily during pregnancy and have 20 whiskeys a day. Uh, maybe the kid's going to end up getting lung cancer, or maybe they're going to win the lottery at some point. Maybe they're going to be a fast runner. Uh, maybe they're going to be smart. Maybe they're not going to be. Maybe they're going to be autistic. Maybe they're going to be super smart, an uh, idiot savant kind of thing. Um, maybe they're going to have freckles. Maybe they'll have a low motivation and kind of be depressed. Maybe they'll have high energy and be cheerful. Maybe they're going to have rich parents or poor parents. Maybe their dad is going to be abusive. Maybe their uncle is going to be a pervert sodomizer of them. Uh, maybe they're going to have a lot of uh, people living in the area. Maybe they're going to live in a remote area. But all these little pieces of paper are being randomly distributed. And some kids will end up with a couple of these little pieces of paper and some only with one. And so that is at birth. They're a bunch of random things that you don't have any control of. They're just kind of deposited into your tumbler, your personal life drum tumbler. And then, for the next nine months of your life, you have no control of anything. Uh, there are so many little things, and each day there's another little thing being put into your tumbler, another ticket. And it might be that, yep, mom's drinking heavily. Uh, it might be that there's a, a car crash that mom is in and, and it hits her tummy that you're in and breaks your arm while you're in the in the fetal stage of humanity and, and that kind of messes you up. Or or maybe your mom decides to eat good organic foods and buy, so there are all these little things that can be happening, these little tickets that are being deposited into your drum. And even then when you're born, for the next four, five, six years, you don't still have very much control over what's being put into your drum, your ticket box, your, your raffle uh, cylinder. You, you don't have any control over it at that point, or very little control. And during that time, uh, there are a lot of other things. Maybe your, your parents move to the country and really get into riding horses, and maybe they move to the big city. Uh, maybe they get rich. Maybe they lose all their money. Uh, maybe the ticket that you get is that you're going to die in a car crash tomorrow. Well, that can happen. That happens to some children. And other good things happen. Um, maybe your, your, uh, 
parents during those first five years help you make your own decisions or just allow you to? Was it Ben Franklin whose parents took him and just dropped him off you know, miles and miles from home when he was five or six or seven years old and said, hey, kid, find your way home? And he did. He made it happen. And maybe they had, you know, you had good parents like that. Maybe they were the kind of parents that were, oh, he's just a child. We better put a safety gate over the doorknob so he doesn't bump his head and wear a helmet. And, you know, maybe that was what you got during your first five years. Who knows what you got? You can't really control it up to that point. And then for the next 10 years, you know, from age five to age 15-ish, so, you know, somewhere in that area, you're starting to have a little bit more control over what pieces of paper, what tickets are going into your drum. Now, you don't have complete control. You're not cognitively completely developed at this point, but you're starting to be able to, to make decisions. And you're, you're watching Dad get up every morning and, and do 25 push-ups, and you can either join him or you can go eat a jar of marshmallow cream. And that's a ticket. Whichever thing you do... You are now able to write something on this little piece of paper and put it in the drum. Now, everything we do has a consequence. If you start at age 7 doing push-ups with Dad, and you do that through age 15, you're going to be in probably much better physical condition than if you eat a jar of marshmallow cream while Dad does push-ups every morning. There are going to be consequences, and... The consequences could be subjective. You know, maybe some people say, hey, now I finally, at age 15, I weigh 400 pounds. And I'm not going to blow away in a windstorm. So that could be a positive thing. Or somebody else might say, yeah, I'm really buffed at age 15 and I'm just in excellent health. I think that's great. So it's subjective. We, you know, who knows what, what your perspective is going to be on something. But now you're getting these random tickets put into your bucket every day, into your drum, and you're also now putting some into your drum. And you hear about this, you know, at age 13, you hear about this financial intelligence little quiz you can take in a kid's book, and, and you take it, and you learn about the rule of 72. And for the rest of your life now, there's going to be a consequence to you knowing the rule of 72. You're likely to be much more financially successful if you know that. If you know about compound interest, and then if you know, as since I'm kind of dedicating this video to MJ DeMarco, I'll mention it again, you also know the negative part and kind of the, the scam and the way people will fool you about compound interest and such. All these little pieces of knowledge are tickets that you're putting into your drum. Now, every day you wake up and you spin the drum and then you draw one of the tickets out. And you can't really control which one you're drawing out. You don't know what's on it. We'll say they're folded up. You don't know if that ticket that day is going to be winning the lottery or dying in a car crash or getting lung cancer or something else. You don't know what it's going to be. But the point is that starting in, you know, five, ten years after you're born, you start having more control about the slips of paper that go into your drum. And let's say that when you're 50 years old, you now have 100,000 little pieces of paper in your drum, and half of them can be horrible ones that you didn't even, you're too lazy to do anything. So it's just, it's the one that says more of the same. Another boring day like yesterday. Nothing great happens, nothing horrible happens. It's just another day. Well, if you don't put your own in and purposefully put in good tickets, then you're probably going to end up at age 50, when you tumble that thing and you draw one out, it's just going to be a random another day like yesterday. If, on the other hand, you have purposefully been doing good things, subjectively good, to help you get to the goals that you have, and your goals will change throughout life, so maybe until age 30, what you really care about is perfect physical fitness. And then you get into a stage that you care about learning about carpentry. And then you get into a thing about caring about philosophy. And, and you have all these different stages in life. And you're putting these tickets in. I guess what I'm saying is, you can't help it if something bad happens. 
if there's a ticket in your drum that nature put in that at age 30 or 50 or 80, you're going to get some unpreventable, horrible disease and die six months later. Oops, sorry, that sucks. But you can't really do anything about that. However, there is a lot of control you can have over all of the others. And that's just a random thing. That's a, what, I don't remember what example I gave, but 100,000 slips of paper in there, that's a chance in 100,000. Like there's a good chance you're not going to get the one that says you die. There's a good chance that you're going to get one that you put in earlier that was learning three new words of Spanish every day. Well, that's going to impact your life. Because each of these little slips of paper is not just a little slip of paper. It is also all of the consequences of what's on that piece of paper. So if your pieces of paper that you put in, one day you put in a number of them, and, and one slip you put in is spent 10 more minutes learning words in Spanish and uh, going over the ones I learned over the last week. That's one that you put in there. And then another one you put in is, eh, I broke down and ate a jar of marshmallow cream. Okay, that's a negative one with a whole set of consequences that will go with that. Just learning new Spanish words and, and the language, that has a whole set of positive consequences, perhaps, that go along with that. And so you can put in more than one a day. If you get up and just live the normal life and go out and work as an employee for somebody else doing something that you're not that interested in, and you're not putting new cards in or new pieces of paper with, with new things, yeah, your life's probably going to go along pretty average. It's going to be just like everybody else on your block who doesn't have a ton of motivation or doesn't care and isn't putting things on their pieces of paper, putting things into their life that are going to make a big difference later. Now, another little side note. There are things that you can put into your life and do, and maybe these are the same, that's the same thing. Writing something on a piece of paper, doing something, putting into your life, that's all kind of the same thing. You could say, my great-grandparents settled this piece of property, and it's been passed down generation to generation. I've worked this piece of property, and by golly, there have now, all of a sudden, hornets decide to build a nest. And that is just morally wrong, and I'm not going to stand for it. And I'm going to go and beat their hornet's nest. He beat that hornet's nest with a stick. Well, you can do that, and maybe morally, practically, from a, a Darwinian standpoint, uh, maybe you have every right to defend your property. Now, is that a smart thing to do? That piece of paper that you're putting into your drum. You've got to realize, as I mentioned, there are going to be consequences. And I'm not going to tell you not to do it. You might be absolutely justified to go beat that hornet's nest and teach them a lesson. I think, though, that you're going to end up getting stung. And maybe you got a card back in your fetal or pre-fetal <laughs> days that somebody else deposited that says that you're allergic to bee stings. I don't know. Maybe you're not. Maybe it just really hurts when 50 of them sting you. But that was your choice to go beat that hornet's nest. And it's your choice to burn bridges in life when you leave a job rather than saying, hey, sorry this didn't work out for either of us. I wish you the best and, and then walk away. You can just start flipping everybody off and the hell with you people and I'm out of here and I hope you guys crash and burn. And you can do either one. Those are little pieces of paper. Those are little things that you're putting into your life. Don't come complaining 10 years later about being hornet stung and how that caused you great pain and suffering, and because of that, you were rude when you quit your job in, a, in this mean, horrible way that burned bridges. Those are some pretty big little pieces of paper that you are putting into your drum. They're going to have negative consequences later in life. Recognize this, and recognize that after these build up, and you have tens of thousands of these pieces of paper, it's, it's not overnight that you can all of a sudden put something good in there and be likely to draw the results of that good thing the following day. It's just not likely to happen. Chances are you're going to draw one of the ones that if you were being lazy, that other people put in there for you. Or if you were doing purposely negative bad things or accidentally bad negative things, 
chances are you're going to draw the one that says, huh, you've been eating marshmallow cream for 45 years, you have diabetes. There's a greater chance you'll have that one. If on the other uh, uh, side of the coin, on the other side, you've been every single day learning something new about uh, investments, about entrepreneurialism, about work ethic, about philosophy. If every day you've been planting these seeds, writing these tickets, these things on these pieces of paper, then there is a real good chance, a real good chance, that good things are going to happen. And again, I'll say it. You could spin it, and you could draw out that random card that happened before you were born that said car crash. Or maybe all the bee stings, I don't know if this works uh, medically, but maybe all those bee stings you got when you were doing the right thing and beating the hornet's nest, maybe those somehow weakened your immune system and now some little bug that you should have been able to get over, yeah, now it whoops up on you and you become a quadriplegic. Well, that can happen too. However, many, 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 many of the parts of your life can be controlled by the pieces of paper that you put into it. So, today is a new day. And I can't remember their names, but I went to a an event. I'm going to do a little sideline thing here because this is really important about the victim mentality. Well, I can't really help what happened because my mom drank when I was... No. I heard this great speech from a guy. I went to his event in Salt Lake City, and, and I'll take a minute or two here to talk about his story. Uh, it, it was a pretty good one. I'll, I'll put his name below when I think of it, and I'll just put it in text uh, here on the screen. But this guy had a horrible, crappy childhood. A lot of negative stuff in his drum basket. And a lot of bad, a lot of bad, a lot of bad. Just horrible, horrible, horrible. And he made a bunch of bad choices and, and just everything was bad. He ended up, I guess in his 20s or 30s, he ended up in uh, Supermax uh, in, I think, Los Angeles County, in their isolation tank of their bad guys, bad guys thing. He was selling some sort of drugs or something. And, and of course, the, the governments don't like that because they, they can't tax them in a uh, they had some other reasons. But anyway, he ends up in this horrible situation. And he has this epiphany while he's in his jail cell alone. And he decides to take the attitude for the rest of his life that he is responsible for everything that happens in his life. And even if there's a really good argument that no, he isn't responsible for the government choosing to make meth illegal rather than oatmeal, no, but he says, no, that was, that's my fault. Everything is my fault, he says. It's my fault if I go out and make success. It's my fault if I do things that are have a negative consequence. It's my fault if I get beat up. It's my fault if I randomly get in a car crash. He says, I am not going to live with a victim mentality. Everything that happens to me, I will take responsibility for. Whether or not it's completely true, I am going to say, that was my fault. And now is a new second, a new minute, a new day, and I'm going to move forward from this. And I'm going to make good new choices. And by the way, after he had that epiphany, he, he gets out of prison and some very good things happen. And the reason I got to listen to him and, and, and meet him and such is because he had done well in a tech company he started and retired young with his wife to Utah and, uh, and was now putting on this huge seminar with all these big names in it. And uh, it was just this, this neat story, and I, I suggest you check him out. But beyond giving props to him and DJ uh, MJ DeMarco and uh, everybody else that's helped me along my journey, I would just like to encourage you to keep putting good or start putting good tickets into your container. Make good choices. Make good investments. Educate yourself. Don't do stupid stuff. If you're going to do something like kick a hornet's nest, think about it. Think about, okay, I have the moral right to beat this hornet's nest, but why don't I put on one of those white bee suit things with a veil? And if you say, well, but I'm poor because my mom was an alcoholic and never taught me how to be good with money, say, hey, no, that's my fault my fault that I'm not good with money. So I'm going to change that. Get a little financial intelligence, go buy a bee suit, a uh, protective suit, and then go beat up the hornet's nest. But know that if there's a hole in it, or if you beat it up improperly, you're going to get stuck. And that's a consequence. And it's nobody else's fault. 
I don't care what kind of bad stuff you've had happen. About 20 years, no, not 20 years ago, 10 years ago, my wife and I talked to a bankruptcy attorney. We'd been multimillionaires just a couple years before. And then the, the central bank caused a uh, crash happen. And we had made some bad decisions. We'd heavily leveraged ourselves, even knowing better, even reading stuff from Mises constantly. Still made some bad decisions. But anyway, we went from a pretty sizable net worth down to a very little. And it was our fault that we built up that net worth. And it was our fault that we lost almost everything and had to actually have that telephone conversation with a bankruptcy attorney. We didn't end up going the bankruptcy route. But that wasn't somebody else's fault. I can't say... Well, it's the central bank's fault that we had this huge setback in life. No, that was my fault. That was my fault that I made the choices that I did, even if I was right in making them, morally, whatever. No. Everything is my responsibility, and that's how I choose to look at it. That's how I choose to move forward, and I choose to put good things, mostly. God, that Hershey's bar this morning was good. Other than that, and other than all the other little mistakes I make, I think that I overwhelmingly, for the last 10, 15, 20 years, have been putting good things into my basket, into my drum. And sure enough now, as I spin it and pull things out, a lot of good things happen. And some of those things you can't help, some of those bad things also happen. But overall, my basket is filled with good stuff. And if yours isn't, Start filling it. It's going to take a while. It's not going to happen overnight or in two years. Keep doing it, though. And all of a sudden, you're going to notice that the things you draw out are good things. Let me know how I can help.